out, I usually play acoustic guitar. Now I'm 60-40 acoustic to electric guitars in my passions and hobbies and chasing guitars. But there is a problem I have every single time I play out, and that is if you're an acoustic guitar player, too much control of your tone, your volume, so much about your acoustic guitar is not in your control. Basically, you're plugged in and you're full volume, and that's it. And it all kind of lives with the sound guy. More than likely, you are going to be sending your guitar tone into the unknown. And it will come back probably too bassy, maybe too trebly. You won't hear it. You can't hear it in the monitors. It's very sterile. There's no reverb. What you need is to build out a simple set of tools on the ground that help you get the most out of your guitar tone. For me, there are two pedals that come with me everywhere. It is the LR Bags Venue DI, and I'll do another video on that. That's a tool I use every single time I play out. And the other one to shape my tone, to add some reverb, some chorus, a couple effects, this is the Fishman Tone DEQ. I want to give a basic run through of fit and features and how I use this. So this will be a review of the Fishman. It will also be a demonstration of some of the fit and features, how it sounds. There will be some sound clips along the way. And ultimately, I mean, this is a thing I use all the time. So it should not come as a surprise to you that I think that if you're in a similar position, this is a really cool tool. <laughs> It looks complicated. Don't worry. Don't freak out. You're okay. So if we're coming in from the right to the left. So if we start over here on the right, you have an input on the side and you have an input trim and then your boost level. Not all pickups send the same volume coming out of the guitar itself. So in the example of my Waterloo WLS, it has a K&K &K Pure Mini. That pickup is not as loud as an active pickup. And so because of that, you just basically set, you put everything in, put everything on noon, you adjust your trim volume to where it's good and present, but not clipping. From there, you move on in. We'll come back to the boost level. Basically, you can affect how much boost this button on the far right adds when you click in for your boost. You can pump it up to where you really are getting out there just straight solo level. Or if you're doing a finger style part and you just need to be a little louder, that's typically how I use the boost. Now, top right is volume. This is all very straightforward. I'm going to leave the volume down because the guitar is plugged in. But you have the volume up here. I usually start around noon and then I kind of let the sound system and the person running sound kind of deal with my guitar at that level. Um, I run the EQ. I usually push the bass a little bit. Actually, on the KK, I drop the bass back a smidge. I'm going to leave the mids just at 11 or so. And then because the K and K does not have as much high end in this guitar, in this example, I'm going to push the highs a little bit. Now, this is all like your mileage will vary because your guitar is different than mine and your pickup is different than mine. And so all of this is just going to be your own preference as you play with this thing. Now, the most helpful feature that is on this, I would buy a pedal that does just this, is the ability to have a low cut. My K and K, because it's just the design of how that pickup uh, works, it catches a lot of the body noise, a lot of my shirt on the back of the guitar. There's a lot of woofiness that just comes through it uh, that isn't necessarily musical, both in function or in sound. And so by using this, I'm able to knock out the 40 hertz is that very low hum. Usually this doesn't actually get picked up unless you're playing on a big sound system, but it does make your sound just sound cleaner and tidier without actually losing that much low end in the guitar itself. 
because the guitar doesn't actually put out any frequencies quite that low. When you get to 80 hertz, you're gonna get a little tidier. You're gonna cut up a little more, but even then it's still a pretty low frequency. Uh, this is kind of smooth sailing for me when I have the K and K. The last one is 160 hertz. Sometimes for whatever reason, your guitar just sounds better, sounds tidier when you really chop out the low, low frequencies. But still at 160 hertz, you are still not even into the meat of the low end of your guitar. Now there's a three band EQ. We talked about this a little bit. Now what I love is that there also is a compressor, which this is, if you want your guitar to sound magical uh, in an acoustic setting, use a compressor. Um, a compressor brings life and presence and uh, it helps with the dynamics. So the compressor is really awesome. What I like is that this is, it's just monitoring and if you are going to peak, it will then help you compress and just bring all volumes to the same volume. Acoustic guitars don't sound good when they are overdriven. Now, this is when you get into the meat of this pedal. There are delays and reverbs and there's also a chorus. There are two channels. The middle is the chorus. Um, it's Well, it says chorus, but there's also chorus one, chorus two, flanger, and tremolo. So here's the sample from chorus number one. Here's how chorus two sounds. Here is the flanger. And lastly, the tremolo adds some chop and adds some rhythm to your guitar. Now in between the two channels, there is a phase switch. So if you're not familiar, phase is basically uh, the relationship of your guitar to the speaker that is coming out. And there are times in which you can be out of phase and it sounds thin and uninspiring and it's noisy and feedbacky. If you flip the phase switch, now there's like three different places that, well, there's two. But in my setup right now, I have a phase on the pedal and I also have phase on the amp back there. You just have to work and see what works right for you. But it's an easy switch. It's right in the middle. It's, it's by itself. So if you hear feedback and you have to bend over, you can quickly find it and flip it over. You're not going to bump anything. Now, on the far left of the pedal, we have the delay and reverb setting. So the delay and reverb is really straightforward. There's two reverbs and then there's two delays. So the first reverb is more of a room. Uh, it just gives a little bit of life and space and breath to your guitar. Uh, the second reverb is much more of a hall kind of reverb, a big, spacious, wonderful, long delay uh, kind of uh, reverb. This is kind of my ride or die, but that's also my style right now. It's just these big, giant reverbs. Now behind that, you have uh, two different delays. The first delay is a little cleaner, a little tidier, less decay on the repeats. On the second delay, you're getting some analog kind of vibes of some trails that are dying and decaying and getting a little darker as they go. So over here on the far left side is where a lot of the business happens. You have an amp output here on the far left side. You also have a DI coming straight out here. So if you want to send this on to more effects, you can run it there or you can go straight out from the DI here to the mains, to the monitors, however you have your setup running. There's also a nine volt DC, which is awesome because this is a big pedal that does a lot of stuff. 
uh, but it still runs on 9 volt. If you want to run this on a traditional pedal board, uh, you could as well really seamlessly run this in line. That's how I run this in conjunction with my LR Bags venue. I used this pedal uh, maybe a month ago. I played at church. I had this and I had the LR Bags. Both are running on rechargeable 9 volts. Uh, and so basically we start practice around 745. You practice for an hour or so. You have a short little break and then you play a first service and then you have a short break and then you play a second service. What happened to me is in the second service, both of them were brand new batteries that had fresh charge. And um, and so this one, because this is doing a lot of heavy lifting, uh, this pedal actually uh, died halfway through the second service and I had to unplug it and because um, it didn't have a nine volt. So that just meant I didn't have reverb. I wasn't using it for a ton of heavy lifting, but I didn't have low cut and I didn't have reverb for the second half of that. All in, um, this is my, so in summary, so uh, the three question gear review that I typically use is what's good about this thing, what's bad about this thing, and should you buy this thing? For me, what is good about this is that it packs a ton of features that are so helpful to take control back from the front of house engineer. You're gonna have some control back from this. Now, what's bad about this pedal? I wish that this pedal had a mute or a tuner, if it had both that would make it to where this does everything that I need. Right now, this, if you just have this alone and you have like a K and K or you have a pickup that doesn't have a volume control, you have no way of actually uh, turning or muting yourself. Now you could run this with a tuner pedal uh, outside and that would do the two things that I want. That's the only thing that I really feel between that and I don't, I wouldn't actually use it on a battery having it die the first time that I used it. And this video is sponsored. I got this in exchange for this video and other collaborations with Sweetwater, but uh, I would buy this pedal in a heartbeat. My friend Eric just bought one of these and I am a big, big fan of Eric and this pedal. This does so much of what I need in a live acoustic guitar setting. So I really like it. I think uh, I'm gonna put a link in the description below. If you're interested, this is a really helpful thing, um, especially adding reverb, because there are a few things more jarring than a tidy, crisp, DI sounding acoustic guitar that's just being shoved into a room, you know, made of cinder blocks or whatever kind of church building you're in. It's going to sound sterile and you, I mean, it, it's gonna throw you off. You're not gonna sing right. You're not gonna play well with others. This does so many things that a modern acoustic guitar player needs. So anyway, thanks for watching this video. I am Jeremy, I'm the Guitar Hunter. This has been a full on uh, review and demonstration of the Fishman Tone DEQ. There's a link in the description down below. If you wanna support the channel, there are a couple things you can do. One, just hit the thumbs up. YouTube, if enough people say, hey, I like this, then YouTube continues to share this. That is a painless, easy way for you to support the channel. Other ways, go to jeremythegutarhunter.com and check out uh, the merch. So go to jeremythegutarhunter.com slash shop. There's merch, there are guitars for sale, there's amps for sale, there's all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, and the last one, you can become a patron. Patreon.com slash guitarhunter for three bucks a month. Uh, and whatever level of commitment you wanna have. You get early access to videos, you get Q and A's with me, uh, you get merch before anybody else gets merch. Uh, it is a really good life to be a patron. So thanks for watching this video. I will see you later. Bye. <laughs>